I love being a grandmother. I remember when they were born, just the joy of seeing another being come into the world and you are part of that. But sometimes fate change our whole perspective on life. My husband and I got custody of Quentin when he was three years old. I'm a grandparent of three children. I guess I was in somewhat of denial at first because they came to me, the two older ones came to me. They was only supposed to be spending the summer with me. Our oldest granddaughter is Shanoa Tahimba. My second is Shani Simon, and then there's Nia Simon. No boys. We're waiting. Six grandchildren. We got a phone call saying that uh, her mother said that she was, had been abused, and we went over and got her. And that was uh, about a year and a year and a half ago, somewhere around there. And she's been with us ever since. I was afraid, to be totally honest with you, I was afraid, because at that time I was 53 years old, and I was done with raising children, I thought. I can't say it here and say it was all about me or what I've done. It's the grace of God and all the people around me that have supported me. The schools, the principal, the counselors, the teachers, the football coaches. My husband and I talked about it. We prayed about it. We cried about it. We, you know, the whole nine yards. But finally, we came to the decision that this was the right thing to do. I never in a million years thought at this point in our life that we would have another teenager. It's like my other son said, um, you had an oops, <laughs> and oh, by the way, she's 15 years old. <laughs> And really, that's the way it's been. You know, it's been a whole new experience because things, everything has changed so much since our last child was her age. Now, as a grandmother, I still find myself at the mall with the girls, in the game room with the boys, at football games, uh, with my back hurting, but I have to be there for the support. So this is totally different. He was taken away from his mother because of her illness. And I would not rest until I found out where my grandson was. We spend quite a bit of time with them. They come over all the time. Um, we have books throughout our house. Uh, they, they see me read all the time, so I think it has an impact on them. They understand that reading is important. Right. Um, right. We actually yeah. have a section on the bookshelf yeah. for them. Yeah. And when they were younger, we would read to them before they go to sleep. Yeah. So we got custody, brought him home, had all the joys that you would think for a three-year-old. The Christmases started over again. The bathing started over again. All of those things started again. But it was a new life for us. Then for the third one, um, he was actually put in foster care from birth, and his mother was deemed unfit, so um, I was able to pull him out of New York system at the tender age of 18 months, and I've had him ever since. We decided, okay, we're doing this. We're getting together as parents once again. Yes, he was our grandson, but we had to start the whole new thing over. The grand affairs were intentional in terms of us reaching out to these individuals and saying, hey, we're here to support you. I have lots of situations where we have opportunities for learning and we see grandma and daughter and grandchild who will come and grandma is just as much involved and grandpa is just as much involved 
as the parent is. My family is very united. Even since we were born, you know, we were little, we all lived together. My, for example, my cousins, they've all built houses behind their mom, their parents. So it's like you have my aunt lives in the front, my cousin lives in the back, and her kids live in the back. So we're very united. We always try to stick together. And I think that's one thing I like at her being home with her kids. And then sometimes I'm ready, oh, I'm ready for her to move out with all her kids are driving me crazy. And then when they leave, I miss them and ready for them to come back. So grandparents just seem like they've always been in, in their life some kind of way, whether they were a custodial parent or just there. Sometimes they were child care. Right, um, right. Often right. their child care, right? Right. Well, Tony's mother was at the mm -hmm. child care, provided child care for our grandchildren. I mean, for our children. Mm -hmm. His number one granddaughter. First. Oh, number three granddaughter, then number two granddaughter. Okay. Okay. So we're going to prepare this angel breakfast this morning. And we have helpers. They've all graduated now to becoming these chefs. In fact, we're going to open up a restaurant, Nia and I. And sometimes we have leftovers. We often don't have leftovers if Nia's here because she divides <laughs> the bacon. And she tells everybody how many pieces they can have. I must say, if there's an odd number... Goes to Nia. <laughs> <laughs> Getting up at 6.45 each morning at this age is a challenge, but you know, I have to do what I have to do. Um, I have, each one of them have uh, responsibilities in the house because with my girls, when I was, when I was just me and my husband, it was different. But with the grandkids, you have to have a schedule. You have to have some kind of organization in the home to keep it uh, running. Because if not, it would be total chaos. I tried and I did all I could do to keep Quentin on the grandson level. I did not try to take the place of his mother. I did not try to take the place. My husband did not take the place of his father. We let him know we are grandparents, but we love you just as much, if not more, because it was a choice. It was a choice that we had, and we chose to bring you home. There's no such thing as quitting. You make it tired and you may just want to sit back and take a breather, which it's normal for, you know, everybody, no matter what you're doing. Sometimes you just need to sit back and look at the bigger picture, but there is no quitting because if I quit, what happens to them? And that's the main reason for them being down here. I can't quit. No matter how much I would want to, no matter how many vacations I feel I need, <laughs> there is no quitting. Just retired, maybe three weeks ago, and my wife's been retired, but it puts a strain on you because you, you know, you, uh, you can't do as much because the child has to go to school. She's good in school, uh, but in, in time she's, she'll be uh, 16 and then hopefully she'll go to college and everything will be fine. It's an adjustment in your home. I'm retired, so I really just feel like God gave me this time so that I can be a grandmother and listen to them and be there for them. We prepared collectively this morning, we call it angel breakfast. That term came from them. Um, when they would spend the nights with us, I'd get up in the morning, I'd make them grits and eggs and bacon and stuff, and they'd rise and they'd just eat. They were young. And so we've added on responsibilities as they've gotten older. And so starting with making the toast to doing something else. Uh, so the, today, uh, Shani made the waffles, uh, Shanoa made the grits um, and helped with the bacon and Nia did the eggs. eggs. Right. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a uh, it's a fun activity. Uh, everybody participates. Uh, you can t t t determine each personality. You have a, a personality that's a dominant one. 
you have a, a you know a more laid back personality, but you learn how to deal with that. You know, right? And I think that interaction, not only with us, it's amongst themselves as well, mm -hmm. to know that you need to be as productive as possible right. in sh in making the meal and enjoying the meal. But it's a learned responsibility. Part of the cooking is going to learn teach them how to be responsible adults as well. I find one of the tools that I use is what was used with me, keeping them in church, getting them active in the choir or as an usher, whatever it takes to get them involved, keeping them in sports, keeping them reading. Um, and I'm not doing this by myself. I want it to be known I do have a village. I mean, we run a scout program uh, called New African Scouts uh, in DeKalb County. And, um, you know, it's important how they, they, their grades are. Um, you know, we ask them when they, before they get a promotion inside of our scout program, how are you doing in school? Right. And in fact, we help to build their self-esteem. Uh, we help with their discipline, so that it helps them to achieve as well. My son's 38 now, and we just had to sit down and talk the other day about things that Wait a minute now. Yeah, you go home. <laughs> but hold up. You're getting a little beside yourself. And that's the way, that's the way my parents did me. I think I turned out pretty good. <laughs> and they, they raised nine of us. I think we turned out pretty good. But, you know, so I try to follow some of those things. We take her to school. We make sure she does her homework. And she wants to go to Emory very badly. So. And she knows she has to get A's to get an Emory, so she's working on that this year. And she's really a uh, all-around good kid. The oldest ones are 14. I have them in a program called Gear Up, and uh, that is through uh, DeKalb County. And it's a program which really track the student and, and help them um, fit into getting uh, college uh, grants and information and resources that you need. Just recently, Josh and Jada went to Spelman and Morehouse on one of the little field trips to expose the kids to um, the college uh, life and curriculum. They are helpful. I, I, I will not knock the cab for anything because the resources are there. We just, we as parents just have to ask and seek the help. We can't be too afraid to say I need help. And for me personally, I say I need help. Porque los los motivo, le digo, tienen que hacer esto para que sean alguien en la vida. Tienen que luchar desde chiquitos para que así vayan progresando. Yo pienso que es muy importante que estén los abuelos ahí para que para motivarlos, para que le digan que ustedes pueden y todo eso. I don't think it's any harder for grandparents to deal with the school than it is for parents. It's just according to how you approach it and what, what are you doing. And don't expect the teachers, the educators, to be our children's guardians. They're not. We are. And it have to start from home. Now, I am coming up on 70 years old. I'm not ashamed of my age. And I tell you that this generation <laughs> of young people is totally different from when we came up. So you have all of the electronics to deal with and watch what they're watching and keep up with what, what's going on with them. Well, we do a lot of talking <laughs> um, and she knows that if she doesn't get projects done in a timely manner, uh, she loses privileges like her telephone, which would be the most god-awful thing that could happen. <laughs> but I do believe that it's very important for us to be a sounding board so that when something's going on in school, perhaps they can talk to us um, as they feel they can't maybe talk to their parents. Grandparents should be very supportive and, and are very supportive and important in the education.
When I decided that I couldn't live um, at my parents anymore, I, I have several family members that I could have gone with, but my grandparents were my number one choice because we, we just connected a lot better than anyone else in the family did. A lot of the times when I was with my parents, um, school was like a very big issue for me. Um, it was just harder for me to do stuff because I never really had help and it was hard for me to focus during my classes. But when I got to my grandparents, um, they would help me with my homework. If I was starting, my grades were starting to drop low, they would email the teacher and they would talk to the teacher to figure, help me figure out what I could do to bring my grades up. When I was two years old, and she brought me down from New York and to here in Atlanta and then she found a nice little home out of the apartment because she didn't have that much space and room for everybody in the apartment so we had to move to a to a house which was big enough for everybody. I feel like every time with my, when I'm with my grandmother um, I feel very at ease and um, even though sometimes I could still be a pain in the butt there. Well, not still, maybe, no, a lot. <laughs> she is the best grandma in the world. But I think if the parents stand steadfast in whatever, dealing with school, dealing with the child, dealing with life in, in itself, the parent has to be that beacon for the child. The parent has to be that, let's go back to parents being the hero for their children. It never crossed my mind to disperse them. So I went and got legal guardianship over them so that I could be sure that they were taken care of. Um, yes, some of the family members said, well, why don't you give us, give us this one or give us that one? But I remember my daughter years ago saying, Mom, if anything ever happened to me, um, don't don't uh, give my kids away in so many words. And that never crossed my mind. So because I want to know where they are at night, I want to know that they are being taken care of. I've lived, I've lived my life. I've had some wonderful experience in life. So to take care of them and see them grow, I have no problem with that. Grandma says, clapped in church on Sunday morning. Grandma says, played a tambourine so well. Grandma says, used to issue out a warning. She'd say, Billy, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. Might be snakes in that grass. Grandma says, Jesus and grandma's head.